recall. There you go. Uh, I am just going to record this webinar. Uh, so uh, it will be on our, on the Ackle and Burley Sixth Form YouTube, cha YouTube channel uh, after this uh, and for people who weren't able to join us today. Uh, if you don't want to watch my face <laughs> for another 40 minutes or so, uh, you're more than welcome to email me uh, and to request the slides rather than watching the whole video again. Uh, my email address is in the presentation later on. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Laura Stanley. I'm one of the Pathways and Progress Leaders at uh, Ackland Burley, and I work in the sixth form. So my job is to is around year 11 to 12 transition uh, and the process that we're going through now. And it's also around careers advice, uh, HE advice. Um, I'm deep in the UCAS mines at the minute uh, because it's the UCAS deadline for year 13 uh, Wednesday next week. Uh, and I'm also responsible for uh, year 13 destinations and progression as well. So uh, the purpose of today's uh, session is to just talk you through in not loads of detail, but just some uh, amount of detail what happens now around the application process to Le Swap for our year 11 students. Uh, so what I'm talking about today is for our internal students, students who are, who are currently part of year 11 uh, and are moving into uh, Le Swap or to somewhere else at the end of this year. So most of the webinar does focus on Le Swap, uh, but there's several bits in here that are about uh, progression to, to every, anywhere. So if your children are applying to other six forms uh, instead of the swap or as well as the swap, then uh, there will be some useful things in here for you as well. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the chat function to type in your question and I will pick them up at the end of the presentation. Uh, and if you still have any questions after that, especially specific questions that relate to your child or your children, uh, then please do email me after, uh, after the presentation and I will get back to you on a one-to-one -one basis. So, why apply to the swap? So this is what we tell your, uh, your children, what we tell um, our young people, uh, why apply to the swap? So one of the main reasons that we find that students uh, want to apply to us is that we know them and they know us. And it, this can be quite a, uh, a stressful time around GCSEs. There's a lot of upheaval. Uh, and being somewhere or staying somewhere that's familiar to you can be important to some students. Uh, another thing about the swap is that we have uh, a genuinely huge choice of subjects and qualifications. We have lots and lots of different pathways that students can do. Uh, we're able to do this because we are a consortium of four schools. Uh, traditional six forms that are attached to one school are really limited in the subjects that they can offer just because of the timetable and the amount of teaching staff that they have. Uh, we are lucky because of the setup of the swap. It allows us to offer a lot more choice because students are working across the, the four different campuses. Um, it, so it means that we have a similar choice to a lot of colleges, but we are still a school based six form. Uh, we offer, and uh, maybe maybe I'm biased here because this is my my remit, uh, but we offer great support with higher education, post eighteen, pastoral care. We have really really dedicated people uh, and teams who you who are there to to help students with this. Uh, hopefully, if you've got uh, older children who've been through the process, you'll agree with us. Uh, and whilst we still are this are a school based sixth form, we do have this college kind of feel because there are lessons in different schools with different students, different staff. Uh, if your child is based at Ackland Burley and they are doing A-levels, for example, they will probably do two of their subjects at Burley and go somewhere else for one more. That's usually the setup that we aim for, two, uh, stu two subjects at your home school and one subject elsewhere. So just to walk you through then what the application deadlines are, not just for us, but for uh, other six forms that many of our students apply for. So uh, our deadline for the swap is Friday, the 3rd of February. Now, if your child cannot meet that deadline for some reason, uh, please do not worry too much about it. Let their tutor know. Let me know. Uh, we're not closing applications then, uh, but we, I've set that deadline to allow us to get the interview process started as soon as possible. We would like all our uh, students to have applied by that deadline. Uh, 
Uh, looking at some of the other, as I say, six forms that lots of us that our students tend to apply to, uh, Camden School for Girls and Woodhouse have both closed. They closed uh, at the beginning of January. So if your young people haven't yet applied to Camden or Woodhouse, it is now too late. Uh, Fortismere applications stay open until the 27th of February. Uh, UCL Academy, they are still open. I couldn't find the deadline <laughs> uh, when I was digging around. Uh, I imagine it will be February at some point. Um, LSA don't close until all their places are accepted, so they have a rolling system of applications. Uh, and Capital College, which incorporates City and Islington, Westminster Kingsway and Haringey, again, don't have a fixed deadline. Uh, they advise you to apply ASAP because they do fill up on a kind of first come first serve basis, uh, but they are taking applications sort of all the way through. A very quick overview then of uh, what we offer at La Swap. Uh, we offer three levels of study. Uh, most of our students go into level three, which is A-level or A-level equivalent. But we also have a, a significant number of students who go into a, what we call a three-year sixth form. So these are students who uh, don't quite get the uh, grades that they need to progress straight from GCSE to A-level. Uh, so instead, they do a year of a level two BTEC, uh, which is GCSE equivalent, and then they go on to a level three BTEC. So they're six, they still leave you'll see later they still leave with the same qualifications uh, but it takes three years rather than two uh, we do offer a limited level one pathway so this is for uh, students with the lowest GCSE grades we only offer this in association with Talica again I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through uh, our requirements then, uh, and you can find all of our specific requirements on the LaSwap website, which is linked to in this presentation, uh, or if you just put the swap into Google, then it will come up. Uh, A-levels. So to do A-levels, we require students to have four GCSEs at a level six or above. Their average grade should be a five, around a five, and they usually need a level six or above in the subject they want to take. Now, obviously, there are some subjects, such as psychology, where they might not have done that subject at GCSE. In that case, that subject will have other entry requirements linked to uh, similar subjects uh, that, that the teachers deem relevant to that, uh, to that subject. You also need a five plus in English language to do uh, A-levels. That is just a flat requirement because of the written aspect, the written content of all A-levels. Now they are linear. Uh, there's such a huge amount of, uh, uh, of exams to do. Um, to do uh, our level three BTEC plus an A-level, so this is what we call our vocational plus pathway. Uh, you need an average GCSE grade of around a five, you need a five plus in English, again, and you need a six in the, or, or whatever the entry requirements are, in the A-level that you wish to take alongside the BTEC. You can, in some cases, do a level three BTEC by itself, and that has slightly lower grade requirements. Uh, and there is also for the level two BTEC, he says we need mainly fours in your GCSEs, but we are a little bit more flexible around this, especially if you pass the subject that is that you know, that is linked to that BTEC. So, for example, if you get a four in art and you want to do a level two art BTEC, then we can be then we will look at your uh, application on a case by case basis. So a conversation to have with your child now as they are starting these applications is which pathway, first of all, are they working towards uh, and are they happy with it? So if they are wanting to do A-levels, does it look like they are going to get the requirements for those A-levels? If it does, fantastic. If not, would they be happy with a vocational qualification, a BTEC or a Cambridge technical? And if not, then uh, what can they do to put themselves on the pathway for those A-levels uh, in the next few months? There are key differences between A-levels and, and BTECs that mean that some students prefer one pathway or another. And again, that is another conversation that is, is really worth having. Uh, our application timeline then. So Jan, so it's 2002 and it shouldn't, it should say 2003, do excuse me, I'll change that <laughs> for, uh, for when I, I send out this, uh, this uh, uh, PowerPoint, uh, but the dates, are, the months are correct. So January 22, uh, January 23, applications are open. They close in February. 
And during February and March, every year 11 student uh, at Ackland Burley will have a one-to-one -one interview with an Ackland Burley member of staff. That will be someone from the year 11 or year 12 and 13 team. Uh, that is regardless of whether they're coming to the swap. Um, because that is, we, you sometimes hear them call the swap interviews as a bit of shorthand, but what they are really is pathways interviews uh, where we will discuss what your child wants to do next. Do they have the right grades to get there? We might talk about uh, you know, things like career options, about university, uh, because we you do find increasingly that universities are number one looking at GCSEs, uh, the, the days of GCSEs being ignored by by unis and just going straight to A-levels or BTECs are way behind us. Uh, most universities have a uh, GCSE basic requirements now. Uh, and secondly, the A-levels that you choose uh, can open up or, or close off certain pathways when it gets to university. Obviously, a really traditional example of that is medicine, uh, which needs biology and chemistry. Uh, but there are other subjects as well uh, at university that have entry requirements that might be a little bit less well known. Uh, lots of uh, really uh, prestigious universities now, so Oxford, Cambridge, Warwick and similar, uh, now want further maths to do a maths degree, for example. Uh, computer science degrees generally don't need a computer science A-level, but they do need maths. Uh, so there are that they are the kind of conversations that we will have. Obviously, uh, not all, I mean, I would say most, Year 11s don't know or haven't decided what they want to do at university. That is completely fine. This kind of advice process takes place all the way through uh, sixth form as well. Uh, in April and May, they will be sent a conditional offer. They'll be given a conditional offer by their tutor. Uh, and this will outline what was discussed and decided on in the interview. So that might differ from what they put on their application form, uh, because it might be that in the application form, they, they put they wanted to do one set of subjects, but in discussion in the interview, they decided that wasn't quite right. And so the conditional offer might say something else. Um, and August is, of course, results day and enrollment. Uh, now, we'll, there'll be an example of a conditional offer later, but just at the bottom here, just so you know, this conditional offer is not a guarantee of a place. It is, it is a conditional offer. So it will say subject to entry requirements. Uh, it, is, it does not mean that the student has a guarantee of a place. It also doesn't mean that they have to come to the swap. It's not a contract. Uh, it is exactly what you, what it says. Uh, and students can hold offers at more than one sixth form. So if they have an offer at you know, Woodhouse, for example, they can also hold an offer from the swap and they don't have to decide which one they want to go to until they enroll in August. So they shouldn't feel at this stage pushed towards one choice or another. Uh, a brief overview of the pathways then. Uh, I mentioned the level one pathway. We only do this around sport. It's a practical course. Uh, this is mainly suitable for students achieving between level one and three at GCSE, so the lower GCSE grades. Uh, if this is your child, but they don't want to do sport, uh, then they should let their tutor know and we will. they will then be referred to Glenn Thompson. Uh, Glenn is, uh, works with us three days a week. Uh, he is a brilliant careers advisor. He's got really good links with the other colleges and sixth forms in the area. Uh, and if this is the case, then you, we will advise your child to go to, to not come to the swap uh, because we do not have you know, the course for them. But colleges, uh, especially West King and City and Islington do lots and lots of level one and entry level courses that will be a lot more suitable for more students. Pathway two, our three year sixth form, uh, suitable for students achieving uh, mainly fours, some threes, twos, ones perhaps. Um, when you do, you choose your level two BTEC course. For a lot of students, this also means doing a maths and or English GCSE resit. Uh, now, GCSE resits are not something that is specialist to the swap. GCSE resits are uh, compulsory for any student studying after 16 uh, in 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 school uh, in England uh, who doesn't have a level four. So regardless of where they go, they can't go somewhere and like duck the reset. Uh, if they don't have a three in maths and or English, they will have to join a reset class uh, until they do have that have that grade four. And that will be the case, as I say, wherever, wherever they go. Uh, students doing a three year six form will finish the swap with the equivalent of at least two A levels if they continue for the full three years, as long as assuming they pass this first year uh, and they can then go on to do the level three. 
So we currently offer four uh, level two courses at Le Soir. We offer business, media, sport and art and design. Again, if your child wants to do something, it, it comes into this bracket of getting threes and fours at GCSE, but they don't want to do one of these things. Again, uh, please, they should let their tutor know or let me know. We will refer them to Glenn. Uh, and Glenn will help them to find a more suitable course at another college or, or sixth form. Again, these are just the ones that we do at the swap. There are a lot more level two courses than this. We just can't offer all of them. Uh, on to our more, on to, on to the pathways then that most of our students uh, go on. Uh, the first one is our vocational pathway. Uh, you choose a level three vocational course, so a BTEC or a Cambridge technical. You can either do a double or a triple. Uh, equivalent to two or three A-levels. Uh, if you do the double course, then you can often select an A-level to study alongside it if you meet the entry criteria. So, for example, you might want to do BTEC Applied Science, which is a double, and a Psychology A-level. Uh, you might want to do BTEC Performing Arts and a Photography A-level, or a Film Studies A-level, or a Media Studies A-level. You might want to do Cambridge Tech Media and uh, Sociology A-level. Uh, so there are various things that you can uh, fit alongside it, or you can choose an EPQ or math studies, uh, which are uh, the equivalent to an AS level, a uh, half an A level, which I'll mention later on. And we have quite a lot of level three vocational courses, so I'm not going to read them all out. You can see them here. Some are double, some are triple. If you do a triple course, you cannot do another A level uh, alongside it, simply because it won't fit on your timetable. Uh, we cannot because of the amount of hours the triples take, the extended courses take, we just can't timetable them together. Uh, so the doubles, you can take another qualification. The triples, unfortunately, you can't. Hi, there's a raised hand. Do you want to ask a question right now? No, okay, I'll keep going. Uh, if you have got a question, pop it in your chat, in the chat. Finally then onto our A-levels. So uh, as I said uh, at the beginning, four level sixes, most students do three A-levels. Most combinations of A-levels can be taken together, but we can't guarantee everything can be taken together. Uh, there are some cases every year, very few number of cases, but there are some cases where we do have clashes. Uh, so and we won't know that until enrolment because the timetables aren't done uh, until then. Uh, as I said, you'll normally study uh, one A-level at a different swap school, and you can also do BPQ or math studies. Uh, and again, too long to read out, uh, but here are our A-level options and they are all on the LaSwap website along with things like, and again, you can click into them on the LaSwap website. You can see the mode of study. You can see the assess how it's assessed. You can see how many exams you have to do. Uh, you can see all those kind of things. Uh, if there's a question, if you'd like to ask now, I can just see a hand up. Thanks again, if we just wait until the, the end then. Thank you. So EPQs, math studies are extra courses that we offer. These are the equivalent to an AS level. So the same as half an A level. Uh, they can be done by BTEC or A level students. Uh, the EPQ is an independent research portfolio. It's absolutely brilliant for preparing for university. Uh, EPQs are great, uh, universities love them. And you can sometimes get a reduced offer at uh, universities if you do an EPQ. Uh, and math studies is an AS level in uh, maths that is taken over two years. So it's five hours a fortnight. And it's really good to do alongside things like applied science or psychology or business. So any, any subjects that have those kind of statistical elements to them, math studies can really help with that. Um, 
that's a lot of information that I don't expect anyone to remember right now. It is a really kind of whistle-stop tour. But as I say, all that information is on the LISWAP website. If you sit with your uh, child, if you go through it, if you talk through it, ask them what they want to do. Um, if you need any guidance around uh, careers, universities, things like that, please do feel free to email me and I'm more than happy to have those conversations. Uh, you Please ask your young people to really look carefully at the current and predicted grades and be realistic and evaluate their skills and weaknesses. Uh, generally, A-levels are linear, which means that all your exams are taken at the end of the two years and they have a small amount of coursework. BTECs have more continuous assessment and assessments that are spaced out over the two years. So sometimes you know, students find that they are better suited to one type of qualification or the other. Uh, but ask their teachers. Um, you know, you teachers will know them quite well, ask them for advice. Um, and it's a really good idea as well to have a backup plan with lower entry requirements, especially if they're on the borderline. So again, your first choice might be biology, chemistry and maths, but your uh, backup choice might be applied science and maths. So thinking through those backup choices. So completing the application form then, the applications are now open. Uh, tutors have introduced these application forms in tutor time this week. Uh, we are asking everyone to complete a little swap application form, even if it's not their first choice, uh, because this will help us a lot with the interview. When we sit down to do the Pathways interviews, if we have the application forms to refer to do, refer to, it makes our job a lot easier. Uh, there is absolutely no pressure to come to the swap based on this. Uh, you don't, students don't make their final decisions until they get their results in August. They have to enroll when they get you, they, they have to choose to come to us. Uh, we don't kind of push ourselves on anyone and neither do we automatically you know, sort of you know, work that way. It, it, it is something that students opt into. And as I've said, you can apply for other six forms at the same time and you know, no worries at all. Uh, before they start the form, so a really good idea uh, for students before they start the form is to have uh, things like personal details and par parent or carer contact details to hand because it will ask for, for your parent emails and things like that. Uh, they should check if they get any support in class or in their exams, because that is a question that, that you are asked. They can ask their tutor if they're not sure. They will need to know their reference grades and they will need to know what pathways and courses they want to do. So they'll need to research them on the swap site beforehand and thought through why they want to do those courses. So are they the right courses for them? Uh, the link. Uh, they should use this link to apply. They must only use this link. Uh, please don't use any other link that you that they find anywhere else uh, because that is probably for external applicants. Uh, this link is on the year 11 section of the Akalabeli website. Uh, so Go, you know, that's a really good place to go from. Uh, login details. So they will need to log in. Uh, this is what the, the page looks like. When you go to that link, uh, you get this, this page. It will say create new application or sign in. They should sign in, not create a new application. Those login details were sent by post, but they were sent in during the strikes. Um, so some people have got them. Some people have had them waylaid. Uh, if they haven't got them, there's no need to worry. They just should just ask their form tutor because their form tutors have a copy of their login details. Uh, so, yep, yeah, please, when they when this comes up, click on sign in. Uh, their username is, you know, is, is like an email address, and then they will have an, a generated password. Uh, once they've logged in, uh, this will be their name. It won't say test, internal test. It will say uh, you know, whatever the student's name is. Uh, they should see this welcome message and they should click continue application down here. Um, and it will prompt them to change their password. Um, so they should set it to something memorable. Uh, once it's been changed, we don't have it at that point. We don't have a, a, uh, a copy of that password. So they should uh, keep a safe, it in a safe place. Uh, we ask them to give as much information as they can. So most of it's really straightforward to complete. It is just really obvious, straightforward and simple. Um, the form, you can save the form. So you don't have to fill it all in in one go. So if they get to a bit where they don't know the answer, they can save it, go and ask and come back later. Um, and if they've got any questions at all, uh, they should ask, ask their tutor, email me, ask their head of year. Uh, someone will be able to answer that question. 
Uh, so at the end, once they it, it has a little exclamation mark if it's not finished, and at the end of each section, they can press send. Uh, there are five sections. So basic details, which are things about you, a learner agreement, what you agree to do, additional information about things like uh, additional educational needs, uh, education, so uh, predicted grades and any qualifications they might already have, and then finally, their choice of courses. So what you would expect. Uh, what happens next? So the deadline is the is the 3rd of February. As I've said, they will be allocated an interview slot. The interviews normally take place in tutor time. Uh, form tutors will give their tutees the interview slot. So they will uh, tell each student, you have an interview with Miss Rimmington uh, on you know, the 16th of February in the common room, in the sixth form common room at five past three. So they will give them all the information that they need. Uh, that interview is to discuss course choices and any other goals. And as I've already said, they will have that interview regardless. Um, we, you know, it, we really do uh, impress upon students. It's really important for them to come to their interviews uh, it, because it is a great opportunity to talk through uh, you know, your pathways options with someone who knows quite a bit about what your options are. Um, if someone, you know, if it, if there are difficulties sort of making that interview, please, again, they should let their tutor know so it can be rearranged, but please don't just, you know, not turn up uh, because it obviously becomes quite difficult to then rearrange them. Conditional offers. Uh, this is what the conditional offer will look like. Uh, and as I said before, it is conditional on meeting the entry requirements for the courses and enrolling. And now that will have the date on there of when enrollment is. Uh, each student will receive this uh, and it will outline what's discussed in the interviews. Uh, but as I say, the conditional offer is not a guarantee of a place. It's not a contract. It doesn't mean they have to enroll. It doesn't mean they have to do anything. It is just a outline of uh, what was discussed in that interview, what they might want to uh, to come along and and do with us. Uh, and it might differ from what's on the application form. Uh, if, as it says here, if the student does not meet the entry requirements for the courses that they wanted to do, another course or courses might be offered instead. So a very common example of that is uh, if a student doesn't meet the requirements for an A-level, we will offer them a BTEC course or a BTEC course with an A-level instead. If they don't like that or and they don't want to do it, then absolutely they can go and uh, look at another sixth form um, or another college who might have a better offer for them. We are aware that we cannot be the best option for everyone uh, and we are more than happy for students. You know, If they do receive an offer that's better for them somewhere else, then we encourage them to, to take that up. Uh, just a little overview then, uh, just thinking on to, to what happens in, in two and a half years time, uh, where do our students go? Just to give you a little bit of a sense of the range of places and the range of subjects that our uh, young people go on to do all over the country, to do all kinds of subjects in all different areas. Uh, you're really, really proud of all of our students. These are A-level students. And from our vocational students, again, fantastic, uh, you know, sort of stu you know, different places, different universities, uh, huge range of subjects uh, from conservatoires to veterinary science, uh, you know, to you know, bioscience. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and our BTEC students, nearly the same number of BTEC students as A-level students go on to university. There isn't a big difference in the progression. Uh, so we don't really don't want students to be thinking, oh, if I can't do uh, A-levels, then there is absolutely no point. One thing I haven't talked about much here is T-levels, uh, because our, you know, our T-level uh, curriculum is, is still uh, in development. So a quick uh, frequently asked questions, and then I'll go into the chat and go into some questions there. Um, one thing we get a lot is I don't like any, I don't want to do any of these things. <laughs> I don't like any of them, uh, which is fine. 
uh, if you don't like any of, if the student doesn't like any of their options, uh, speak to their tutor. They will organize an interview with uh, Glenn or with me uh, or with someone who knows more about the broader uh, sort of landscape of qualifications across Camden and, and beyond. But we would say, please fill in the little swap form as a back, number one as a backup. And secondly, so we have that information. So it's easier for us to, to, to do that interview. Uh, what if I want to do a different pathway to the one that's currently suited to me? So again, quite common question we get from students uh, where we recommend a BTEC pathway, for example, and they say, I really want to do A-levels. Uh, what I would say in that case is if they qualify in August, they can absolutely do A-levels, 100%. We don't lock anyone into anything but they should apply for the pathway suggested to them now uh, and we will discuss that in the interview. Uh, do I have to study the courses that I choose now? So do you do they have to do the courses that they put on the application form? No, they could change their mind. Uh, the application form should be as close as possible to what they plan to do uh, because then we have the best information to go on but we absolutely know that people change their mind loads between you know, February and August. Can I do more than three A-levels? Yeah, if your reference grades are all eight and above, your predicted grades are all eight and above, you can choose four A-levels. We don't have many students who do four A-levels, and we know from uh, feedback from universities across the board, they prefer three strong A-levels over four okay A-levels. They would rather you have three A's than two A's and two B's. And that is across the board from, and, and from even from medical school. So uh, that's that you, it's better to do three A levels in Excel than to do four and not do quite so well. You can't do more than one A level alongside a BTEC and it's simply because of the timetable, it won't fit. And that's why you can't do an A level with an extended BTEC. Last little bit, as I've already said, you can absolutely go to uni if you do vocational, and you can absolutely go to uni if you do a three-year sixth form. It, it, it doesn't matter whether your sixth form takes three, two years or three years, it doesn't affect your university application. Um, it's a good idea for students to do an action plan, something like this, uh, with a backup. Um, so they've got a sense, you know, they've got it might all be the swap. It might be a variety of different places, uh, but so they've got maybe a an exam a, a, a pathway that has slightly lower entry requirements. And finally, if you have any more questions after this, then please do contact either myself. My email address is at the bottom there. Uh, Mr. Ali Saeed, who's the head of year, you know, he's the head of year eleven. Tess, who's the head of year twelve and thirteen, or Anna as the director of Key Stage Five. We can all help you out. So I am just going to take a second uh, and I'll be with you to answer some questions in the chat.
Hi, everyone. So I'm just going to run through these uh, questions now, the last uh, few questions that are in the chat. Uh, so uh, I've, I've had a couple of questions about uh, students who have uh, additional need, additional educational needs. Um, the grade, the entry requirements are the same uh, for students uh, who have um, additional needs. However, we will always be, we will always look at every single instance in a bespoke way. Uh, so if you, if there are uh, students who have uh, special educational needs and have had support from the school, then we will speak to uh, the AEN department, we will speak to the students, and we will always work as hard as we can to find the best uh, Sort of place for that student. We want that to be at the swap. We'd love we we we'd love to keep all of our students, but that can't always be the case. Uh, if there isn't a pathway, a, a course that's suitable for that young person at the swap, then we will help them to apply elsewhere, including helping them with their interviews, helping with them with their applications, and making sure that those uh, 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 applications are are done and are supported uh, but as I say we will try we would do we will look at every single student on a case-by-case -case basis especially in the case of students with SEN uh, however um, and, and if your child currently has provision SEN provision in year 11 that will continue into the swap uh, so any uh, provision they have they will carry through uh, just linked to that as well, uh, another uh, another question that that was linked to that was um, does do internal applicants so Ackland Burley students uh, do they have um, a automatic entry to the swap? They don't. Uh, we don't have any students who have a, an automatic run straight into the swap. Uh, everyone has to go through the process of doing the interviews, doing the application and doing the interviews. There isn't the uh, automatic entry. Um, a few questions here around uh, students who filled in, who've, people who've already applied. Uh, you don't need to apply again. No. So some people, when the external applications open in December, we know that some people use the external link and have already done the application. That is fine. Don't worry about it. I will transfer it over to an internal student. They don't have to do it all again. Uh, let's have a look here. Sorry. Uh, why do some A-levels uh, need a six in math, such as product design, a practical subject? It's because product design actually has a significant written element to it as well, uh, a lot of which, and a lot of it is to do with uh, kind of graphics and spatial awareness and uh, 3D design uh, that links in quite strongly to maths. Um, and that is why those requirements are there. It's the same with subjects such as psychology. Psychology needs a six in science or if it, a six in additional science, or if you do individual sciences, it needs a six in biology because a large amount of the psychology curriculum is linked to biology and, and those kind of concepts. And again, a five in maths is needed because of the statistics elements. Uh, so sometimes it's not immediately obvious what the uh, you know, what the link is uh, until you dig into it a little bit. If you, in most cases, if you go into the SWAT website and go to curriculum and you have a look at the at the subjects in depth, then you'll be able to see a little bit more about uh, what what's involved in that individual subject. Mm -hmm. Uh, question here, can you do a BTEC art and a film studies A level? Yes, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to apply for a BTEC art and a film studies A level. Uh, those two would would normally be able to be taken together. Uh, I think we have students doing BTEC art and, and film studies. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, just question about how to apply for Kingsway College. If you go to their website, um, if you go to Westminster Kingsway, again, they have an online application just like the swap. Uh, so if you go to their website and directly apply to them through there. Uh, can we select only the swap and have only one choice? No, as I've said, the uh, you can apply to as many six forms as you want um, and you can if you get offers for more than one, you can hold all those offers until you get your results in August. Uh, and then once you get your results, you decide where you want to enroll. So there is no pressure to choose one sixth form over another until you get the results. Uh, results day, by the way, uh, in August is the 
Thursday, the 24th of August this year. So that is GCSE results day. And A-level results day is the week earlier, the 17th. Uh, do children need to specify homeschool? No, they don't. So the ho that's actually a really good question. Uh, the homeschool uh, is the school where they will do the majority of their subjects. So you, if it's A-levels, two subjects. If, it, if they do a BTEC, it will be where they do their BTEC. Now, in, if a student has a really strong preference over where they want their homeschool to be, we will try to meet that. But it does depend on the subjects that they choose. So some subjects like uh, sociology, psychology, maths are taught in every school or nearly every school. And so you, you can have a little we, we can fit you in a bit more where you want to be. Some subjects like product design, music, uh, computer science are taught in only one school in most cases or languages taught in only one school. And in that case, that kind of uh, can start to set your homeschool for you because of where uh, where the subjects are. And if you do a BTEC, your homeschool is always where your BTEC is taught, because that is either two thirds of the curriculum or the whole curriculum. But where we can, if you do have a preference, we will try to to meet that. But we, we can't uh, promise it. Uh, deadline for submitting work, sketchbooks for students studying art. I'm, I actually don't know. Uh, I'm afraid. Uh, if you want to drop me an email, I'll ask Miss Pry and I will get back to you, but I'm afraid I don't know off the top of my head. So, uh, what does double or triple BTEC mean? So, business. Uh, BTEC business. So the double BTEC is a diploma. It's the equivalent to two A-levels and takes up the same amount of time on the timetable as two A-levels. The triple is awesome, or extenders, as it's sometimes called, is the equivalent to three and takes up the same time as three. So some subjects like business, you can choose. You can do a double or a triple. Some subjects, you can only do a double or only do a triple because that's all we that's all we offer. And that is up to uh, it's up to the student which one they they want to do. Uh, can a student work in another school if they want? You can work in a school where you are taught, where you have a lesson. So, for example, if you're based at Ackland Burley, you've got a lesson at LSU, you can work at LSU. However, you cannot go and work at Wes or Parley in that example if you don't uh, go to that school. So it has to be a school where you attend for lessons. Uh, do children need to come in person to register? So in previous years, yes, you've always had to come in uh, to enroll in person. This year, we are hoping we can do some of it online, but please watch this space. We will let you know uh, as soon as we know. Uh, is it approximately five hours per week uh, per subject for A-levels? Yes. Uh, if you do a double, do you need to do an A-level also? In most cases, yes, we want you, we would like students to do an A-level also because that takes them up to a full-time timetable. Uh, it can be an A-level or an EPQ or math studies. But in some cases, uh, students, you, there are some students who uh, just who do just do a double BTEC on its own for various reasons. But we do try to avoid that where we can, mainly because if you want to go on to university, most universities are looking for you to have three A-levels or the equivalent. So uh, you know, we try to make sure that most students have that uh, in 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 advance uh, so they're not struggling later down the line but it's not the case for every single student as i say we do quite a lot of bespoke timetabling uh for students and that might be one of the ways that we uh, uh one of the things that we offer in in certain circumstances fantastic so i think i'm at the end of the chat uh, at the end of the the questions in the chat, if there's any more, if people, I just want to give it a couple of minutes now. Uh, if anybody would like to uh, add another question in there, and I'll answer. Obviously, please feel free. If if all your questions have been answered, uh, you do not have to stick around. Uh, okay, 
just one more and then we will wrap up. Uh, can you change subjects and do an EPQ instead? Again, sometimes, not always. Uh, if we have a student who was particularly uh, struggling uh, in a subject, then we might suggest that they change from that subject to an EPQ. But in most cases, we try not to do that, again, because we want to keep people doing three A-levels where possible. Uh, when our mocks, uh, the HSEs, the high stakes exams in year 12 are just after the Easter holidays. And there are also year 13 mocks uh, in the autumn term and year 12 mocks around Christmas. So they're at different points in the year. And this will be the last one. <laughs> what is the BTEC equivalent to an A-level? So a, as I said, a BTEC diploma, which is a double, is equivalent to two A-levels. So in terms of UCAS points, which is the currency you use for going to university. Uh, and BTEC extended or a triple is the equivalent to three A-levels. So that's the amount of time on the timetable and how many UCAS points they are worth. And they're the two types of BTEC that we offer. We also offer a Cambridge technical. So media is Cambridge technical, and that is a diploma. So the same as two A-levels. Lovely, everyone. Thank you very, very much. Uh, loads of questions today. Thanks very, very much uh, for everyone who came along. Uh, as I say, the recording of this will be on the YouTube channel. Please do email me if you would like a copy of the slides um, or if you have any other questions. Good night, everyone.